Welcome to Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking features delicious recipes and cooking tips from the Gulf Coast's finest chefs and restaurants. Watch as popular local chefs prepare their special dishes with natural gas. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, provider of clean, efficient natural gas. My guest today is owner and chef Joe Abston of Tin Cow, Tin Cow, and Tin Cow. Tin Cow. Three Tin Cows. Three Tin Cow. How about that? I love it. Thank you for having me. It's always so much fun to, to cook well, with you. We love having you too because, boy, do you make some different dishes. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say different, unique. We try to. Unique gourmet dishes, and today is no exception. Today of is course. no exception. So we are going to get started with one of your special burgers. Tell us what it is. So we're going to do what's called a banh mi burger. Um, a banh mi is a French, excuse me, it's a Vietnamese sandwich mm -hmm. that because I'm kind of this food nerd, history, mm -hmm. I love the food history, it's actually a sandwich that, was, that came about because the French colonized Vietnam. So there's that little twist on it. It's traditionally done on a baguette, so a you know, traditional French baguette, mm -hmm. and it has a pork pate with roasted oh. pork, a couple of different vegetables, mayonnaise, very traditional, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's a sandwich. You can get it around town. We were at uh, we were either eating them at Yummy Deli or we were eating them at Golden Palace, mm -hmm. and we thought, you know what, this would make a really delicious burger. We got to figure out how to make this into a burger. There so, you go. Exactly. So we're gonna kind of put together. It, it, burgers are burgers. Mm -hmm. It's meat and buns and all the stuff that goes on top of it. So we're gonna kind of we're gonna do a seasoned pork and beef blend, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna cook up. I know you're hungry. You've been talking about it before we got on the air. I am. I'm always <laughs> so, hungry when there's a show because I know I've got good food to eat. I love it. So we've got a pound of a ground pork and beef blend, mm -hmm. um, medium grind, and I don't cook it. I don't. I, I believe you can cook pork to a mid well. You don't have okay. to burn it. You don't have to be right. completely dry. So the two things we're going to add to it is fish sauce. Fish sauce is one of those things, I don't know if you've ever played with it or not, but fish sauce it's, it's one of those ingredients that if, you, if it's missing, you're gonna know it. But you can't really tell, you can't really taste it. And for if it. you smell it, if you never smell it, forget exactly. it. Exactly, I, I think if I were to ever break one of these in my car, I would just sell my car. <laughs> like we just have to get rid of it. So this uh, again, we got a, so. a, a pound of the beef and pork blend, and we're gonna do about a teaspoon of the fish sauce. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the ones I normally, the fish sauce I normally use is from Phuket. Uh, and I, I love it because, again, it's that history thing. My dad was in Vietnam, he went to Phuket Island, he saw these, mm -hmm. this being made. So I thought that was kind of a neat, neat little trick. Yeah. Uh, the other item that we use is oyster sauce. So it's mm -hmm. a oyster-based sauce. I am highly allergic to MSG, so none of our food in any of our restaurants have MSG in it. So okay. I'm very, very cautious about that. A lot that. of people are, so that's yeah. good. Yeah, so we're gonna go about a tablespoon and of course, I'm going to I'm going to measure this completely, right? I'm just going to be such an accurate. Mm -hmm. So, I'm also going to use my favorite tools. I love getting my hands dirty. Mm -hmm. So, basically, only way to mix it, right? Exactly. And the the nice thing about oyster sauce and fish sauce is they already have that umami flavor, and they 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 add your. Uh, they add your salt to it, so you really don't need to you don't need to salt anything else that goes on that. Um, normally, when you throw a burger on the grill, you'll hit it with a little salt, a little salt and pepper, something of that nature. This one, you avoid it because it, it will do a uh, it will it'll just get too salty. Yeah. So, um, really, I've I've added vegetables to this, um, but traditionally in the restaurant, we just use it as a as just the flavoring. Mm -hmm. So summer's coming to an end, but it's still, this is the perfect background, backyard you weather know, for in me. In Florida, there's, you know, maybe a few weeks or yeah. so. That you know, it's about a week and a half. It's too cold, but. Exactly. Most of the time we can grill all year long. Exactly. Very lucky. So, And I, I also, I really love flat grill, uh, flat grills instead Rather of a char grill. grill. Um, if I'm cooking at home, mm -hmm. a char grill's nice. Yeah. Um, but I do like the sear that a cast iron or something can, mm -hmm. can give you. I agree. Now, you know, Tin Cow is, you're all about burgers. We're all about burgers. All kind of burgers. 
Build your own burgers. Build your own. Have it your way. Just you know, all kinds. Um, but you said the most popular is still the classic. The classic burger. You know, lettuce, tomato, hands down. Pickles, that's onions. What people want. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it does very well there, mm -hmm. but we also were kind of known for the oddballs. So we have a lot of buffalo, venison, mm -hmm. beef and pork blend. We have turkey, chicken, you name it. Yeah. We bring on different vegetables, excuse me, we bring on different proteins throughout the year. Uh, we've done elk burgers. We've done a camel burger. Uh, camel? Camel burger, a two humper. Uh, but we only served it on Wednesdays. Do you get the joke? We only served <laughs> it on hump day. <laughs> Yeah, after you told exactly. me. <laughs> the punchline. <laughs> well, um, was it very popular? I mean, did it, it was. Did it was a very like interesting. It? You know, it has. What's it, it taste like? You know, it tastes like camel. Oh, but, okay, that's it, good. But it, the cigarette or the animal? No, no, no. I think the animal. <laughs> but uh, it was great. It's, a, it's got a great flavor. It's a little. Uh, it's kind of fatty, like like beef is. So it's okay. A, kind now, of that's a, what it's not a it? tremendously lean okay. meat. Uh, and then we spiced it with Moroccan flavors and, uh, you know, did all kinds of stuff. And we just, we kind of take our inspiration from maybe it's a sandwich that we mm -hmm. have at a, mm -hmm. at a restaurant. Or maybe it's a cuisine from a different country. Maybe it's a, yeah. you know, there's, there's inspiration all around us. What just, I love about you, Joe, is you're not afraid to try anything. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I mean, it's just so... It's so much fun to come and see what's new yeah. at Tin Cow or your other restaurants, and uh, there's always something new. Yeah, exactly. Different. They, um, it, we, we have a lot of people that that work with us mm -hmm. and that are in our culinary team. That they're they're just they're excited about food. Hey, Joe, let's try this. What about this? And that can come from some of our kitchen managers. It can also come from our rank and file cooks and dishwashers there and say, you, you know what, I had this great mm -hmm. uh, the. We just recently put pork rinds on our menu, and we did it because we were talking with a dishwasher who had brought in a bag of pork rinds yeah. that he puts on his sandwich. And I said, you know what? That's a great idea. We're, let's let's, <laughs> let's put it on. Let's try that. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it, it, that's the neat thing about what we do is we're able to kind of pick and choose and pull yeah. from different locations. Well, and everybody, I think, sometimes is, is a, I mean, traditional is good, mm -hmm. but to get out the box, Exactly. Out of the box is fun. Yeah, it really is. My, you know, my some of my favorites are the, the combinations that you wouldn't expect. It's bacon and kimchi. I don't know if you have a kimchi. Uh, our kimchi is made by uh, Saki Cafe, uh, oh, a yeah. great friend of mine, Wyan. Mm -hmm. um, and and we're going through sixty pounds of of, of really of, uh, kimchi a week. It's crazy. It's really crazy. And he said, "What are you doing with all this kimchi?" You know, he always is telling me. <laughs> Well, we're cooking it, man. They like it. They're, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, That's right. Yeah. I wouldn't be buying it if they weren't eating exactly. it. Exactly. Right? So That's... I'm also not a, I'm not a weight person. Have you seen, mm -hmm. you know, we keep smashing the, mm -hmm. I don't do that. To me, you flip it one time. Yeah. Have a nice day. Right. Yeah, we right. don't want to, we don't want to. Well, when you press it, all the juices are leaving the burger, right? Exactly. Exactly. That's what keeps it plump and juicy. This one of my favorite, and this is why I love cast iron because you get and that. And why you love natural gas? I, I, I cook with nothing else. Right. So we're about, well, we got about a minute and a half on that one side. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna give that a flip a root. See, oh, that's the that's beautiful. Good. That's yes. what we're talking about. We want that that nice little that the crust yes. that uh, that this a flat top or a, a cast iron mm -hmm. skillet will give you, um, and a real hot natural gas. Kill it. Right. So again, we're gonna cook, we're gonna we're gonna flip it one time. Mm -hmm. So next thing we're gonna do is kind of get get the other things. Now we, we went back to that sandwich. What was the closest thing that I could get to a French bread? Because we tried this on a French bread and it was very strange. Mm -hmm. uh, just didn't work. So we use a brioche bun for okay. this one. So it's an egg based bun. Uh, it's a typically your wheat buns and mm -hmm. regular buns. They don't have the egg and the butter in it. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's a little bit eggy. Kind of so, rich. It is on the rich side, exactly, yeah. because this I is this it. is still pretty lean. It's got a lot of, you know, it's got a lot of flavors to it. Um, and then, so uh, they have a cucumber on their, on that uh, that banh mi, mm -hmm. the the traditional banh mi. So get a couple of cucumber slices. Now, you know what? I'm gonna get a glove mm -hmm. because I've learned my lesson. Where we get our jalapenos, right now they're coming out of North Carolina. 
and they are some of the hottest things I've ever seen in my life. When we, I will literally take, I'll order the, the, my burger with a, with a jalapeno on mm -hmm. it, and then I'll take the jalapenos off, because they're just so hot, and they leave the flavor on it. Wow. So, what you can do, so I'm gonna get a couple little slices, but one of my little tricks, is you know the heat in a, in a jalapeno is always in the, seeds. Uh, the, in the seeds and the, mm -hmm. in the, in the, 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 the ribs. Uh -huh. So one of my little tricks, Oh, I see what you're doing. Is just roll that out of there. Yes, now that is a good trick. You can use it with uh, bell peppers. Yes. You can do the same thing with bell peppers. Look at that. And you're not just chopping it to pieces. Yep. Trying to but get I'm gonna, in there. I'm going to clean most of those ribs out of there. Okay. Most of those seeds out of there. Very good. Yeah. So our burgers are looking great. Burgers are looking good. And they smell wonderful. Yeah, we're getting Ooh. close there. Perfect. And then right. we've got to talk about the potatoes. <laughs> this man uses how many potatoes a week in, uh, in the three restaurants? In the three restaurants we go through, well, we use a ton of potatoes. Like a, a ton? ton. Of, no, like really. 2,000 pounds. A ton of potatoes. Yeah. A week? A week. Not a month or a year. Yeah, a we week. use a lot of potatoes. So I have this great story. My friend was a sommelier for a real fancy restaurant in New York. He, he was, he used the most, he imported the most truffles from Italy of anybody in the country. So the, the Italian truffle board flew him and his boss over to Italy and wined them and dined them and truffled them and did the whole thing. I use so many potatoes, I'm really nervous they're gonna try to send me to Idaho or something. I really don't <laughs> want to go. Oh, that oh, look is at that. Funny. There we go. Are we ready to put this together? We are just about ready to put this together. Okay. That's the great thing about a, a, a hot gas stove. Yeah. It, it will. It will. Cook. It will do it. It'll do the cooking. For sure. Well, we are just about there. Okay. Should we wait and take a commercial break or do that now? Yeah, we can do that. Okay, let's take a commercial break. We'll probably have this put we'll together, together maybe. We'll get back. We'll stay with us. We'll be right back. Natural gas homes are in demand. Here's what home builders have to say. I would say majority of the of our homeowners that come in and talk to us and see us, that is one of the first items that gets brought up would be natural gas. A lot of our customers are on the energy efficiency side. There's really no way you can argue the efficiency of gas over power in my opinion. That is a very, very big selling point in our houses is natural gas. Go blue and save green with natural gas from Pensacola Energy. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Welcome back. We're cooking with Chef Joe Apson from the Tin Cow, and look at our burgers. The burgers are ready to roll. Beautiful. So, like I said, we, we uh, haven't quite cooked them. We, I, don't, I don't like them to be dead. I like them to be juicy. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of flavor in them. And those are just delicious. They so, I'll show you what we did with it. We take a little bit of mayonnaise, and mayonnaise is traditional in this bon mi, so it's a, it, you got to trust me on this. Let's do a little bit of cucumber. Got your greens. Take a little of those jalapenos that we've already taken the seeds out of, mm -hmm. so they're not ridiculously hot. And then cilantro. And the truth is, oh. I don't, I don't take the leaves off. I like the stems. The stems are where most of the flavor is. Is it? Yep. So I strip beautiful mine. burger. I didn't know you yeah. weren't supposed to. No, it's not a supposed to or can't or what have you. It's just yeah. all. Well, I just didn't think it had flavor. It's, that's where the mo that's where I think okay. a lot of the flavors, especially if you're making sauces, you're gonna blend it up, make mm -hmm. something out of it. Yeah, that's that's definitely a way. You can make chimichurris or something like mm -hmm. that. Okay, I'll have to do way that. Way to go. So that's ready. That's, that's ready. That's great. Let's put it up front here. Sounds good. All right, we're gonna mm. get on to the next our next uh, little dish. So again, we looked around us and said, what do we like to eat? I like to eat Asian food. Mm -hmm. um, I love sushi. I said, you know what? Why can I not make a sushi burger? There you go. So we make a sushi burger. So Inspiration all around. All around us, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to start with about a cup of mayo, mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had to think, all right, what goes in the sushi that I need to bring out those flavors and somehow put that on, on, on a burger? What goes in a California roll? Well, there's, there's seaweed, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's seaweed that wraps, so we, mm -hmm. we use, a, it's called wakami seaweed. So it's a dried seaweed, and I do use it dried. 
Also, what do you normally do? You dip, you dip it in stuff. So you dip, right. dip it in a little bit of soy sauce. Mm -hmm. So a tiny little bit of soy sauce. I love the wasabi. Oh, wasabi. Wasabi. So we put a little wasabi powder in. Mm. So, again, we're kind of thinking of what makes, what's those flavors? Where, where do I need to, how do I need to combine a sushi roll into something else? Yeah. So, very simple. I let this sit for probably 20 minutes or so. Uh, the seaweed will soak up your, your mayonnaise, will get nice and tight. Oh, okay. So, real simple. If it's got too many ingredients, right. it just, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, we, uh, what else we, what, what else needs to go in sushi? Wait a minute. It's a little secret. So, smell this. It's called dashi flakes. Mm. So, it has a salty sea kind of flavor it to it. Mm -hmm. So, dashi flakes is actually a dried fish flakes. Um, it's, it's a, a, a dried bonito. So, it's oh, a... Oh, okay. I've so, heard of bonito. Yeah, bonito. And again, it gives you that, where's that umami flavor that you get from, mm -hmm. a, from, a, from a sushi, from a, a, a sushi roll. So That looks good. You know what, I'm gonna taste it. Yeah. Do you mind? Oh, Joe, that's good. It's good? Mm-hmm. Well, Very touch. good. Very different. A touch more soy, just a touch. Soy sauce is one of those things, instead of using salt, mm -hmm. Issues. It's got a distinct flavor too, mm -hmm. and and a texture. I, I think it's the seaweed. Mm -hmm. It's the seaweed. It's a little bit of the wasabi. It, it, it you think about it, you're not going to eat a big spoon of this. So this is going to go on a sandwich. Mm -hmm. That's going to be, you know. But flavor, wow. Yeah, absolutely good. So, um, what else? What else do I need to put on sushi? I need tuna. Yes, you do. So mm -hmm. we're gonna. Sometimes we'll crust it with sesame seeds. Sometimes we'll use. Uh, just a little salt pepper. Mm -hmm. Give it a sear. Beautiful little. Mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for it. And you'll do this rare? This one we'll do rare or mid rare. Okay. Again, we're gonna go on a brioche bun. Mm -hmm. Give it a little, give it a little, that egginess needs a little bit more body to it. Uh, we were looking around of all of our all of our burgers that we all the buns that we typically carry, a wheat bun, bun wheat bun would not work. The the corn dusted mm -hmm. Kaiser wouldn't work. I don't mm -hmm. want to put it on Texas toast. Don't want to put it on a jalapeno cheddar bun. Uh, we get those from Bagel Heads. They do a great job for us there. Uh, maybe well, this should be brioche. Brioche is, works well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So let me grab my cucumber back. So again, we're talking about what are those pieces and parts that have. That, that you make into a, uh, a seaweed, mm -hmm. uh, into a sushi roll. California burgers, yeah, they'll have, they'll have a little bit of a uh, cucumber. Might as well put some cucumber in it. Different texture there too. Exactly. Flavor. Looking good, John. Oh yeah. yeah. So what else do we, what else do we need to put? Uh, sometimes in a sushi burger, sometimes in a, in a sushi roll, California roll, sometimes we use Avocado. Mm -hmm. So we use an avocado mash. Um, very consistent. Instead of getting the chunks a little weird, um, we go with an avocado mash, nice and clean. Um, you know what? Sometimes they have those pickled things in them. Maybe they, maybe do some carrots. Ginger? Some pickled is ginger. ginger. Is ginger going in there? Some pickled ginger. Yes. I like some I love shredded carrots. Ginger. Yep. Uh, neat little, a neat little uh, vegetables daikon. I don't know if you played with it or not. Um, it huge root, sometimes mm -hmm. two or three feet long. Um, great, it's a, a radish family, but it's not it's not extremely spicy, so it just gives you a nice little crunch, little mm -hmm. uh, it's bits great and pieces. Great salads. Awesome. In I've salad, never had yeah. it on a burger, but it's great. We got to use your little twirly thing. You were talking about My your little spiralizer. My new yeah. toy. <laughs> <laughs> I think she got it from Bodacious, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I love it. I can tell you that it's, it's been fun. So. Great thing about tuna to me is that it is just oh. hot, blistering hot skillet, salt, That's pepper. That's important, isn't it? It really is. You have got to have a hot skillet. You don't cook any meat on a cold skillet, do you? I don't, well, it doesn't I make any of. sense, yeah. 
So this again is a kind of a, it's that, it's that idea of how do I, how do I, how do we put that together that makes sense for, you know, it's a burger, but it's sushi, but it's a burger, but it's sushi. So I love, I love this playing around. Um, so we're going to grab, start dressing our burger because that sushi, that tuna is almost ready. It sure is. So we're going to get a little bit of did our... Did you play around with food as a kid? I did. Did you? Yeah, my mother ate, my mother and father ate some horrible things that I made. <laughs> Because they loved you. <laughs> that is true. But they also were very, very uh, uh, upfront and said, Joe, this is horrible. Uh -huh. you know, they'll tell you a story about a time that I, I made mashed potatoes. I think I was like 12. They almost had to throw away the bowl and the spoon. <laughs> I don't know what I did with it, but I don't know what I did wrong. But, so, but you didn't do it again, right? Exactly. I didn't do it again. There we go. See? Oh, perfect. I love it that Beautiful. way. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So we've got a little bit of the soy mayo down. Uh, let's do some cucumbers, because cucumber goes in there. Mm -hmm. How about some avocado? That goes, mm. on, that, that goes on your, that makes sense to go on your, in your sushi roll. How about some pickled ginger? I like pickled ginger. I love that. Carrots. Little carrots. This is quite a colorful little burger, too, isn't it? Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. Yeah, I like this one. Oh, and the daikon's going right and the on, daikon. The, on the cucumber, And I too. put that on the bottom side because the meat's going to hit that, and it's mm -hmm. going to get nice. and It'll help to kind of bring out all those flavors. And away we go. Let's see if I can get this in one shot. You did. Beautiful. Look at that. Now I don't know how you eat that. <laughs> one big bite, huh? Light, one big bite. Well, I think we'll show you when that. we... Uh, when we do, when we Look do our dessert, that. maybe you'll get to taste some of these too. Okay, maybe so. This is perfect. Let's put it up next to our other burger. Sounds good. <gasps> and up next is our special dessert from Tin Cow. Should we tell everybody what it is, or just wait? We'll let's wait. Let's wait. That's why you have to stay with us because we're going to be right back with our dessert. Natural gas homes are in demand. Here's what home builders have to say. Our customers seem to like gas and we pride ourselves in quality of production and quality in our houses and using gas just helps us with that and helps us sell houses. Customers seem to like the convenience of gas logs in their fireplaces. Who likes carrying wood throughout their house and lighting a fire? And they really seem to like the convenience and being able to turn the switch on and have a fire. Go blue and save green with natural gas from Pensacola Energy. It's dessert time. It is dessert time. It's your favorite part of the day, isn't it? Well, I will probably start my meal with this first. There, that's not a law against that, right? No, okay. not at all. I didn't think Make so. sure you got room for it. That's right. You that's why I always start with dessert. Exactly. Because I'm always usually too full to enjoy it. So. Yeah. So we're doing milkshakes. Ten cows known for milkshakes. We've yep. got tons of flavors. We also do some really neat stuff with them. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of about a cup and a half of what we call soft serve. You can use vanilla ice cream. Um, just depends. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want it soft though? You want a little bit soft. Okay. So the other thing, we house infuse vanilla vodka. So we use the vanilla beans. Once you, if you cook with vanilla beans, mm -hmm. throw the, the the rest, the leftovers yeah. in a bottle of vodka, make some delicious stuff. So we're gonna do about an ounce and a quarter. We're gonna do a little brown sugar. Tell everyone the name of this one. Key lime. Key lime. Milkshake. Key lime, and it's it's received a special honor. It has. We uh, were voted the number one milkshake in in Florida <gasps> by SpoonUniversity.com. Uh, so it's a wow. pretty neat stuff. So real simple. That's all it is. I know if you don't have one of these at home, which most people do not have a malt spinner at home. If you don't, use a little immersion blender. Can you make it in a blender? You can make it in a blender. And away we go. So let me show you one of the other tricks. We warm up the side of it and more of it comes out. Because we know oh, okay. you don't want to uh, waste any of it. We don't want you to waste any of it. Little graham crackers. 
Now, are you okay with an on-air test? Mm-hmm. You bet. Oh, my goodness. Not that bad. is delicious. Not bad. Key lime. I love it. All the way. I do, too. Oh, that is good. Well, let's, before we uh, mention about the different restaurants and talk about your locations, I want to give everyone our telephone number. If you would like written copies of Joe's recipes, you can call Pensacola Energy at 436-5050, or you can visit our website at coastalcooking.com. And we had mentioned at the beginning of the show that there are three tin cows. Three tin cows. We are now open in Pace. Yes, the brand new. Brand new. We, even newer is the Nine Mile Road location, uh, 204 mm -hmm. East Nine Mile Road. Mm -hmm. uh, the original location downtown uh, that's of been course. there for about four and a half, almost five years now. A very so popular spot. It's a, great, it's a great place. We are a family of restaurants, so we do have uh, Hop Jacks, which is mm -hmm. the original downtown, the thing that got us all started mm -hmm. uh, at uh, 10 South Palafox. And... Our, our gym, our little gym is Pot Roast and Pinot. Mm -hmm. uh, my beloved Amy, uh, you, you've met her a few times. Yes. Um, that's her, that's her restaurant. I write the menus for them and it's mm -hmm. just an amazing, it's fun. It's where we get to have our creativity and play around. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have all the social medias, the Twitters and the Facebooks and the, mm -hmm. uh, the MySpaces or the whatever, any, any of those Instas, Snaps or whatever the whole, okay. we, we have them all for all the restaurants, Hop Jacks, Tin Cow. Pot roast and Pino. Tencow.com. Tencow.com. Hopjacks.com. Yep. And pot roast and Pino.com. Pot roast and Pino.com. Okay. Well, now each of your restaurants are distinctively different mm -hmm. and well known for, for a certain cuisine. Tell us about pot roast and Pino. How would you describe that cuisine? So we call it a twist on comfort food. So mm -hmm. it is meatloaf, deviled eggs, pot roast, things like that that you're, you're used to. We take them and we take a, a chef's ideas. And, on those classics, and we tweak them up a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, so we do really do some great stuff. Deviled eggs are done with butter poached lobster knuckle and and uh, very different know, pork yeah. belly. So it's really some great stuff. But mm -hmm. it's not upscale, mm -hmm. but it's upper scale. Yeah. So it's, we're not snooty. We don't keep our pinkies out. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just a lot of fun, great food, and a lot of great people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's really what what, what makes all of this possible mm -hmm. is is an amazing. I think we're 340 employees now in oh. a family of restaurants. Wow. Um, so uh, that's what makes these things great. Mm -hmm. These things great. Pot roast and pinot. Right. It, it's it's built on the the employees that we have. Some of them been with us for years. So it's been a, that it's says a, great, a lot. Great. Yeah. And then tin cow, of course, your burgers and milkshakes. Burgers and milkshakes. Mainstay exactly. right there. And then hop jacks. Hop jacks. Pizza and beer. Pizza and beer and and fries. Oh, and fries. Don't the, forget the, the two thousand <laughs> <laughs> pounds of potatoes exactly. a week. Well, Joe, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much. It's always so much fun to, to, to cook yes, with you. Yes, and I can't wait to dig in. <laughs> I've already dug into this exactly. a little bit. But uh, you can find these recipes and many more great dishes at any of your restaurants, right? Absolutely. We'd love to have you. Okay. Well, we want you to come back for the other two restaurants, okay? Uh, I think, I think is pot roast is next. Pot roast is next. Let's All right. do it. All right. And we hope to see you again next week because we'll be here with more Coastal Cooking. This has been Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, provider of clean, efficient, natural gas. Join us each Sunday at 6 p.m. for more Coastal Cooking.